Hello, my name is Kimberly. I wanted to share what the Safe and Sound protocol has done for uh, my little guy. Uh, he's five years old. He's an amazing little one. Uh, a little bit of background, he came to us at two years old through the foster care system. And from the time I met him, I was completely in love as many adopted parents understand that feeling. Um, I also knew we were in for a lot of challenges and honestly I never thought we would be where we are now. He has been diagnosed with moderate autism or level 2 autism, uh, fetal alcohol syndrome, disinhibited social engagement disorder or RAD, um, ADHD, hyperkinesis, frontal lobe deficit, and conduct disorder. When he came to us, he was a very aggressive, yet very happy and joyful, but when he wasn't, he was extremely aggressive and it would seemingly come out of nowhere, but we, we could tell that he had no control over these emotions and he was having rages that were over an hour long and there were multiple times a day post safe and sound protocol we're not experiencing daily meltdowns or rages definitely not rages we don't see the screaming like we used to or you know we see something that's more of a typical toddler meltdown as what i would call it he's able to suddenly regulate his emotions in a manner that even if he does get upset he can come out of it very quickly I could not take him to the grocery store even alone. We would go with his behavior therapist um, a couple times a week, and every time we would go, he'd have anywhere between two to um, three meltdowns each time, and he would just drop to the floor and start climbing everything he could climb, throwing everything he could throw, growling at people, attacking me, and so it was just... We could not go anywhere without a backpack leash because he constantly was trying to run. Any moment he could, he would run. Um, it was the only way we could keep him safe. Now, after doing the SSP, we go places and I don't have to use the backpack leash. I take it more as a precaution now. Um, it had gotten to the point where we wouldn't take him outside because he could get outside of our fence. and. When he did, he would run and go to the neighbors and cross the street. It was a, a huge safety factor. Prior to the SSP, he literally was trying to escape our house on a constant basis. I would catch him. We, 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 live, we live in Fort Knox. I mean, it's not just the exterior of the house. He would try to get to any and everything in the house. So we had to lock up food, desired foods, because he would just engorge in them. Um, also meltdowns from that constantly. He wanted it, and if he didn't get it, it was just a constant source of meltdowns as well. Um, now, post-SSP, I can't tell you the last time he's tried to escape our house. He's gone out the fence twice, I think, um, but even those times, if we request that he comes back, he comes back. Also, going shopping, I can take him places without assistance in We've seen, we did the SSP almost a year ago, and I would say that we've had maybe four meltdowns in the stores when we go, and they were nothing near as severe as what we were dealing with. Um, the last meltdown that I had when I took him to a store by myself lasted almost an hour, and it ended with many, many strangers coming and trying to help me keep him safe. Before SSP, he could never accept being told he couldn't have something or no or not getting his way. It would always turn into a meltdown. That's why I say they happened all the time. Um, after SSP, it's like he could suddenly accept no, and that's life-changing, too. Um, deeper conversations. Our little guy, he's always been... hes a, He's great at communicating, and it was he's always so much fun to talk to. But after the SSP, he would just go into depth, go in depth in conversations. He would ask questions. He was just more inquisitive, um, and that happened a couple weeks after.
doing the SSP. Um, along with that, he could process cause and effect. It, it's it, even in the moment where before um, strategy, like um, behavior charts, things like that would never work with him because he was in that fight or flight all the time and he wasn't able to process cause and effect. Um, now, after doing the SSP, he can not only think about what might happen if he does something, but he verbally, he started verbally expressing that if I do this, this is going to happen out loud. And it was just so wonderful to hear him voice these things that we, we never saw him even think about. He's always been an affectionate little guy, but when it came to I love yous, I usually only heard them at bedtime when he was really tired and laying in bed and he'd say I love you mommy or if it was um being recip uh, reciprocal uh, of when I said it and he said it back post SSP he was saying it all day long <laughs> anytime we would ask him to do something it was no shut up you know I mean of course he said it much much more angrily um I feel like we, it was pretty much 100% non-compliance most of the time, and it was very hard. Um, after the SSP, we got about, I'd say 50% of the time he would listen, and it was just amazing, and it's only continued to approve. We did do some other therapies that I think helped with the compliance um, in a big way, um, but I know that it wouldn't have happened without the SSP. And so that was huge. I mean, every day I sit back and I think about where he's come from and where we are now. And it's just, it's overwhelming. Um, just getting him in a car seat daily used to end in him beating up on me, pulling my hair, scratching me, spitting at me, punching. And it was such a struggle and to keep him safe and get him in there. Um, I can't tell you the last time it's, it's no longer even an issue. I mean, it's just things like that. So he can focus now where before he couldn't. Um, you could put him in front of a game, an iPad, anything, and it would never hold his attention more than a minute, maybe sometimes a few minutes, but he'd be gone. Um, now he's able to sit for periods of time alone and do things on his own. Another thing that changed that was, well, the, a lot of this was unexpected, especially to the extremes that we've seen it, but another thing that I had no idea to expect was his handwriting, coloring, and drawing. The first time we did SSP, all of a sudden, I had um, a little magnetic drawing pad, and he just started drawing on it. Never had I ever seen him draw anything willingly, even if I tried to get him to draw something or his teachers tried to get him to draw something, he would only draw like a few shapes and that was it. Suddenly he started drawing a heart for me, um, coloring. He used to just scribble over the page. He had gotten to the point where he would scribble with different colors over objects, but it would still just be completely out of lines and just the whole page was scribble. After SSP, all of a sudden he started coloring in the lines and he'd make sure the whole the whole object was colored and that never happened before so this is a child that um every therapist we've seen um neuropsychologist his pediatrician they have all told us to be looking at residential treatment facilities because he was only getting stronger and his emotional regulation was non-existent um, and as scary as that was for us to hear we knew where it was coming from and we were worried too and I no longer worry I stood I no longer worry for him I feel like my worries for him are much more in line with what every parent worries about for their child and um, we are just forever grateful for the safe and sound protocol and Dr. Porges and so we wanted to share our story and I hope that anyone that's willing to listen will do their research and see about trying this amazing protocol.